Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you guys doing today? Good. Very good. Thank you, Victoria, for coming on with us. I'm so happy to meet you. Thank you so much. Of course. Likewise. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Thanks, everybody who's coming on. Hey, Mario. Mario. Hi, Aaron. Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Can't complain. Just managing this really, really cold day in D.C. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't envy you. Hi, guys. Hey, hey. how are you? I'm good. Uh, my daughter's at home with COVID, so I'm kind of oh. not leaving the house for a few days, but she's uh -oh. okay. I'm okay. It's just uh, lots of doing projects around the house this week. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope you guys recover quickly. So far, it's not been too bad, and I'm thankful for that. It's, I mean, it's rampant everywhere, and mm -hmm. her, her school's back to virtual, and just crazy right now. It is. I mean, I hate to. Uh, it's a weird time. It's just. It's weird. Okay, so let me get Sheena unmuted. All right, we'll get started in just a second. We're trying to make sure she knows it's all good. Looking good, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. That's gonna happen. All right, let me see. Hi, Sheena. Hi, everybody. Hey, Good Sheena morning. Baker. Good morning. I don't know what was happening, Mark. I was trying. I'm like, I'm clicking and nothing was working. <laughs> Good old technology. Yeah, I want to open my blinds because I look dark on here. Hold on. I'll be right back. All right. So um, we're excited to have um, an awesome conversation today with uh, two amazing real estate agents. Um, and they happen to be two of my friends, one a longtime friend, one a new friend. Um, so first of all, let me say thank you to both of you for um, joining us. Uh, this will give us as photographers a lot of insight into you know, your world and how we can better serve you all, um, but an opportunity to ask questions. So to everybody here, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. We're not going to open up the lines to do it at least right away, um, but we want to be able to get those questions and field them. We have a, a long list of questions that we're going to try to get through. Um, but um, as we're doing that and getting ready, I wanted to um, share a little bit about Sheena. If I read her whole bio, we'd be here the whole hour. So <laughs> we can't talk about everything she does, but she is super phenomenal. One of the most amazing realtors that I know. Um, multi-million dollar producer. She um, has her own group of people that she supports, her own team. Uh, she operates out of Chicago land. One of the most absolute genuine people that I know and truly a pleasure to call a friend. Thank you very much. That's so sweet. <laughs> and then Victoria, um, 
one of my newest agents, um, had the pleasure of getting to know her here in North Carolina. But again, super sweet, very generous, very kind. One of the most um, amazing people, also a model. So she's like doing it both ways. Also a million dollar producer, um, a little newer to the game. Uh, Sheena's a veteran and Victoria's a little newer to it. So we have two ends of the spectrum covered uh, to give us great insight and great perspective. So I'm really excited to jump in and um, I wanted to introduce my uh, teammate, Tammy. Uh, Tammy is also a photographer, but she's my uh, my teammate here at Kubikasa, and um, she'll be assisting me as we go throughout the day. So yes, let's jump morning, in everybody. and um, get started, if you guys don't mind. All right, let's do it. All right, cool. So I wanted to start with a, a fairly easy question. Um, and we can start with either of you, whoever wants to jump in. but what qualities do you look for in a real estate photographer as you're building your team, as you're, you know, growing what you build around you? What are you looking for? Um, what I've always looked for is um, promptness, <laughs> someone that's on time, professional, um, and just, you know, knowledgeable um, for me uh, is, you know, yes, I sell a lot of real estate, but I'm not a photographer. So I never try to get the two mixed up. I don't want to be a photographer. It's not my wheelhouse. I have enough on my plate. So mm -hmm. I would love to, I love to work with people that know their job, do it well. Um, and I, you know, uh, very seasoned in their profession like me. Um, so, and that I can trust. So that, because Mark, when you were here, I barely had to go to any shoots. I, you know, we worked so well together. You knew what I liked. You, I knew you were going to get it perfect. I, you know, I can trust you and I can be on to the next. So that was very, um, just somebody really I could depend on. Um, yeah, kind of to piggyback off of what she said, I agree. Uh, great communication skills is a must. Um, mm -hmm. Very personable, not only for me, but for my clients, because, you know, I, that's a strong thing. I, you know, portray to my clients like you know I'm very personable I want everybody that I work with to be the same way um effectiveness yes uh, we we need to get these pictures on the market so we can get these houses sold <laughs> and kind of like she said um you know working with Mark the you know I've used him twice now and I haven't been to either of those and he he did it perfect like I wasn't worried I wasn't you know, I didn't have any like, oh God, is he going to get it right? I knew he was going to get it right. So just being able to trust the person that you're working with. I mean, that goes with everyone that you, on, that's on your team that you have under your umbrella. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And um, <laughs> to be bluntly honest, Sheena, um, so when we first started working together, <laughs> it really wasn't the perfect um, thing. Uh, we had a, a for me, a rocky start because I didn't know what I was doing, to be honest. And we met, what, like, was it six years ago, Sheena? Yeah. And, and I mean, I wasn't even going to say that if you were. But, <laughs> no, but I think it's an important characteristic because what you did for me was you you gave me feedback and you shared information. You you didn't just decide to go somewhere else. You chose to say, hey, I'm I'm vested in this relationship and I'm going to give you feedback rather than just saying on to the next. Yeah. So, so in front of all of these people as my witness, thank you so much because that meant the world to me and it helped me to form my business and do uh, bigger and better things. So I appreciate well, it. Yeah, no, I just, I felt like, so Mark, of course you do way more things than just real estate photography. Of course, that wasn't even your first, I think you know so when when we met it wasn't even real estate photography related I don't even know how I asked you to, to shoot um you know a house for me and so I knew I could have went to other people were using this person and that person and I'm like no I really like Mark though so I'm like I'm just I had to give you the feedback because I'm like if you can get the equipment and things that they do why can't we work together and you were willing to do it and you mm -hmm. like perfected it and you would not stop perfecting it so it was like why would I and it ended up you know everybody that I was you know, no, I know a lot of realtors here. They all started using Mark. So it kind of like, you know, grew to that too, mm -hmm. I, I guess you would say. 
Um, so I think sometimes you're right. You do have to give a person a chance. Don't just throw it out the window. If you have a good relationship and they're willing to listen to you. Um, I just used you as an example uh, yesterday to, <laughs> to my new photographer. They're great, but it's like the shot you used to always give me, like with the drone kind of going towards the house. It was like yeah. just different. And I'm like, I don't, I want something different. I don't want my listings to look like everybody else's listing. And so they were trying to like say that the drone being a little too close like that, something else. I just gave them like 10 photos of yours where I'm like, these shots look great. It's nothing with the drone. And so then they're like, oh, OK, we can do that. So so I'm even sharing your work now with people that have been in the business for over 20 years to tell them that I want it like this. So you have you whatever you did. Kudos. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. So you kind of touched on something and I want to, um, to ask you both, how, how much does quality of the images that you get matter? hundred so, percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Um, I'd say the picture sell the house really, um, you know, even just with one shot, that first shot of seeing like, you know, Mark, we talked about the grass that you did on my most recent listing. Like that grass looks way better than it did in person. So if somebody's seeing that, they're going to, you know, that's going to get people to the showings and, you know, they can see what it could look like. You know, if you just watered it, you know, put some fertilizer, fertilizer down and stuff, then this is what it could look like. So I feel like the quality is 100%. That's number one. Um, I think all realtors would agree. <laughs> agree. It's the very first showing. So yeah. and that's what I explained to my sellers. So the very first viewings of your home are going to be online. So, and I just had a client of mine, like, I want to practice my, my photography skills. Do you mind if I take my own um, pictures? I'm like, you can for your own personal use. I'm like, but for my list, the list listing your house, no, it has to be a, pro a professional because this is your first shot. So if they don't like your home from the pictures, they're not going to view it. So it is, it has to be quality and I will not um, take your phone pictures or anything like that at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. And, I, you know, again, I'm asking questions that um, I really appeal to a broad level of, of listener because I think a lot of us are in different places. <clears throat> and sometimes I think it's important to hear that the work we put into creating an image really matters. You know, we do a lot to make sure we're leveled and focused and, and doing all those things. And I think it's good to hear from two incredible professionals that, you know, that work really does matter. Yeah. Tam, you have anything you want to add so far? Well, I just, it kind of brought something to mind, especially since our, the way that we work has changed a little bit since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and so when I was shooting, last year and maybe the year before, I was hearing a lot about, you know, agents who were reducing their services because the market was so hot and people were buying things. And so they were sort of changing the services that they would offer um, or that they would include on a specific listing. Like they felt that they didn't have to do as much to sell the property. So they weren't doing as much, which to me, maybe this kind of speaks to both of you, how you want to represent your brand, because really what we're, we're creating the content that kind of runs your brand. So do you, do you specifically have a package that you always offer? to your sellers or do you kind of um do you adjust it based on the property how do you go about that or you just to kind of get a mindset like i do the photos and i do the floor plan and i do a virtual tour on every listing or does it shift every time so for me i don't do virtual or uh, or um floor plans mm -hmm. so but the photography um if i think it needs uh video I will tailor it depending on what kind of listing it is. But every single listing is professional uh, photography and there's no change in that. How I market each property is exactly the same. So mm -hmm. because the market is fast, it does not matter because who knows if it was not professional photography, how do I know it would have sold so fast? So, um, right. so, and it's not, of course, we know 
the photography is a lot, but it's a lot that goes into what we're doing behind the scenes to get that listing up on the market, to get it promoted out to the masses, to talk to all these realtors that call us, even though it says schedule online. So it's mm-hmm. a lot that goes into it. So we, I never discount my services and I'm not that realtor to do that. So, um, so yeah, no. <laughs> hmm yeah, I could agree. So when I first started out, so I, um, it'll be three years this year. So when I first started out, I didn't start with professional photography. You know, you're starting, you're like, oh gosh, you know, I don't want to spend all my money right away. But um, I kind of look back and I kind of regret not spending that money because those listings probably could have gotten gone way sooner than, you know, just me trying to be a photographer. Like she just said, like mm-hmm. some of her clients just want to do it. And I was like, you know, let me just try it and see. Um, but I feel like, no, like, like she said, it's just a reflection of our business because we post this, we market this social media is big. Um, you know, you want to post good quality images on social media and not poor things because what people see, you know, sometimes their images may reflect and they're like, I don't want to work with her. She gets those type of pictures on her listings and such. So right. um, it's not just for this current listing we may be marketing, it's future clients and things like that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Do mm-hmm. you do you expect your photographers to be presenting you with new ideas? Like, um, I, I'm just curious how you decide when you're going to add something new. Is it just like, um, would that be part of your training with your associations that you're part of, or do you expect your photographers to be suggesting new things? I'm just curious. I don't Uh, expect it, but I think it's nice to, you know, to know, like, if you guys have something else that you're coming out with, I will always say present it. And uh if we feel the need or I feel the need, like, okay, that might be good for this listing. At least now I know that this is offered by my photographer. So Mm -hmm. I always like to know like everything you do. I like to know that anyway, Mark will tell you like if there's anything, even if it's outside of photography, you do something else, like tell me because I nine times out of 10, either I can use that service or I know somebody that can. Mm -hmm. So tell me everything of what you can do. And then, um, cause it, I can guarantee down the line, it might be a property. Like I do want a floor plan for this. I do want to you know, a a virtual tour for this one. So it's always going to come up at some point with all the amount of clientele that we have. So Mm -hmm. I do, I definitely love to hear, you know, new ideas. I like new stuff anyway. I like to be the first to, you know, oh, I I heard about that already. We do, we do that already. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's the same here. Um, Always like to learn new things. It's never too much knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, in social media, playing back to that. I'm a big social media person, if you can't tell. But if I see different things, you know, I might see this person, they posted this and I'll say, oh, maybe I like that for my next listen or something like that. So um, exactly what Sheena said. <laughs> Thank you. So so does it, you know, you've talked a lot about um, your business and how you operate and how you go about those things, you know, um, I always consider myself part of your team. How much does appearance of your photographer matter when they're going out representing you? For me, um, I'm a person as come as you are. I want my clients to like me for me. Um, You know, I don't want to portray a different image. Um, If I have to change who I am or change the way I dress or the way I talk to get a client, you're probably not the client for me. So I want everybody on my team to kind of reflect me. So I want you to be as comfortable as you are. Um, No, maybe like a, you know, a higher price point listing where it's like a luxury, considered a luxury listing. Then of course, you don't want to just show up in jeans and sneakers, Um, just maybe, you know, nice business casual, but I'm just the type of person, you know, be who you are. They're going to like you regardless of how you dress or not be presentable obviously but not over the top <laughs> yeah i agree can, i'm like i feel like our three-piece suits <laughs> right put right. those away <laughs> yeah because you're the ones bending over you're all catching yeah. the angle so you need you need to be comfortable um yeah. just you know i i think just groomed is if it's a male well male or female I think that that's nice because you're being you're they're gonna see your face 
I mean, now we have these masks on, but b- before that, at least, um, you know, if you weren't uh, shaved or you just looking like you just got out of bed, we don't want that in front of our clients. Um, so we still want to have, you know, you know, well-groomed, I would say, but I feel like it doesn't matter if you have a t-shirt on and you're, you know, a camera around, who cares? Most of the, the photographers here that I work with, they have like shirts on the back says media team. Um, so they know that that's what they're there for. So I think that we're used to it, you guys being more comfortable. So I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would say I used to dress up more when I first started, but then as you realize um, now it's just something that's neat and groomed. Of course, the hair goes up because it's always all in the way and we need to be able, I know Mark always does shoe covers. I usually just do stocking feet. So some kind of slip-ons, I mean, you can't be wearing heels and moving trash cans and stuff like that. So neat groomed. And of course, just like you say, we we come in with a, a helpful attitude and, and just be friendly. And I think that that goes a long way. Yeah, I don't um I don't put my hair up anymore and I don't wear heels. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you both are very busy and you have a lot going on. What's more important, the quality of the photography or getting it back faster? Quality. That's the easy answer for me. <laughs> yeah, we definitely want the quality. But we, I don't want it to take five days from the photos to come back <laughs> either. <laughs> so it's the delicate balance. Like I want quality, but uh, I'm not saying I need it back, you know, 10 minutes after you leave the house. <laughs> so what is, what is ideal? What is the, uh, what would you find as acceptable? To me, 24 to 48 hours after, most of the time I get photos back within 24 hours. So some of my clients, they want them back like ASAP. So right. they're ready to list it, you know, and I have to let them know 24 to 48 hours. Even if I get them back in 24, I could be on the road. So I need to make sure that, you know, I have time to now sit still. It has to be, you know, it's not just throw the photos up and the house is listed. We have to sit down and go through that listing. So yeah, 24 to 48 hours is usually um, better, best for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. I say maybe, and also too, depends on like the marketing date. So if I plan to have the session, photography session, you know, on a Saturday and we're going to list the house on that Tuesday, obviously, you know, that gives you a longer time span. So I guess it just depends on the marketing date for the house. Um, But I feel like 48 hours is feasible. Um, I don't know how, what you, what it takes for you guys to do, you know, and maybe that's a good question for you guys. Like, what is, what is the max time that you feel is good to get your clients images back? So I'm going to have them answer in the comments and then we'll, um, we'll circle back to that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you prefer to book your photography? I know both of you do, you know, little bit different. So how do you prefer? Do you prefer to do it online? Do you prefer to call? Do you mm-hmm. prefer to text? No, online. So my, well, my team book, like I'm talking like I book now, my team books all the photography, um, but it's all done online. To us, it keeps it streamlined. So we know who's, where it's booked, what time it's booked. We have a point of reference. To me, it's more professional that way. I, I love systems. So I like to, uh, to do it online. If there's a platform for the photographer to do it that way that's preferred for us yeah and and I like to book online but I will text Mark (laughs) 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 you think he gets this this, that he's like yeah and then he'll just send me something back so either or is fine with me um because I just typically write it in my calendar or put it in my phone or something like that so I can have reference of when it is gotcha and uh Victoria to answer your question within 24 hours is the overwhelming majority of the answers. Okay. And, you know, sometimes 48 for video, but 24 to 48, mostly 24. Okay. Good to know. So you have a shoot set up, you know, they go out, they do the shoot, 
something's wrong. What do you expect to happen with a, a messed up shoot? I just had this happen. It wasn't a messed up shoot, but it was a messed up drone shot. Um, and it was sent to me by accident. So, um, and the, the, you know, the image was just crooked and it was not a balanced image. And so um, I emailed the photography team and they said that that one shouldn't even gone to me, but the drone, it was so freezing cold here. When the drone went up, it wasn't flying properly because of the mm -hmm. cold. So um, they, you know, then they did what I expected. They said they will, as soon as the weather got, you know, it's been negative degrees here. So today is nice. They'll go back out, retake all the drones, and then they'll send them to me again. And that's totally fine. I said, okay, just let me know when you guys go out. Yep. Agreed. Same thing. I mean, that's, I feel like that's the obvious. Like if you, if you realize you messed up or if I point out that you messed up, if you're willing to fix the issue, I'm okay with that. I'm not mean. <laughs> <laughs> everybody right. has their days <laughs> exactly yeah and and we cannot hear we can't fight the weather right. so and you're right or just it could just have been a bad shot like I've had um shots sent to me where I'm so busy I didn't even notice that my client's husband was in the shot um because he was like out in the backyard and he shouldn't have been out the way and they didn't notice it either and so they apologized <laughs> They apologize and said they'd be more careful when, look, when looking. So, I mean, stuff happens. But overall, right, I've never had anyone be like, oh, we're not fixing that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I know there's also commonplace to have issues um, where, like, uh, Sheena, I know you had a listing where the color of the walls was, like, really ugly. And it's like, okay, so maybe we should repaint it and it was listed and then it didn't sell. And then it's like, okay, we're going to paint it. So, you know, from that perspective, you know, I think it's important again to communicate and have a good relationship so that when those issues come up, it's an easy conversation to say, Hey, here's the situation. Here's what I need to do. And then, you know, go back and forth yeah. from there. Yeah. And that happens here. It's still, I still get that because you can't make sellers sometimes understand what I know. Like I know this mm -hmm. isn't going to sell like this, but here we go anyway. And so now you're going to paint or now you're going to stage like we talked about initially. And then I have to contact the photographer back to say, hey, I need these rooms reshot because now the paint has changed, the furniture, you know, we staged it. And then I pay, a, you know, additional for those uh, shots, which I'm totally fine with because that's what, it, you know, you guys got to come back out. So yeah, it, it, and I do like that, you know, where you know, like, yep, Sheena, I'm coming back out let's reshoot these rooms and it, it helps to sell so mm -hmm. how do you guys feel about um virtual staging i know you mentioned having it physically staged but um how do you feel about virtual i like virtual staging but um lately i like the staging in the house even better um but the virtual staging definitely works too it, to get them there <laughs> mm -hmm. um but sometimes if it doesn't sell, it means they need to see it. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like they can't picture it without the furniture actually being there. So mm -hmm. it just depends. I've had certain listings, you know, well, Mark did a lot of the virtual staging that they sold, you know, like that. And then um, I have some now, like virtual staging didn't work. I had a, a listing next to an apartment complex. It did not matter. That virtual staging was beautiful, <laughs> but... I had to have it professionally staged in the house and it sold, then it sold. Yeah, I guess it depends on the property, pretty much kind of like what she said. Um, I haven't virtually staged any of my listings um, and I probably should start that. So I like it. I like going online and seeing other people's listings and seeing, okay, you know, they could put the couch this way, or, you know, maybe they can add a sectional this way. So it does give the client options of like kind of where they can place their furniture and how it's going to align in the room. Um, and I feel like that kind of goes hand in hand with like the floor plans too, because a lot of people will say, well, I don't know the dimensions of that room. And, you know, I got a king bed, like, will it fit or something like that? So I guess it's nice to have virtual and, you know, actual staging in person too. Mm -hmm. cool. yeah. So um, we'll pause. I'm going to go back to you, Tammy, and then we're going to jump into some questions that we're getting from the group. And then we'll kind of get ready to close out. Go ahead, Tammy. 
Sure. Oh, well, I was just going to mention it really, the virtual staging, it's gotten so much better. So um, it, it used to look kind of not so good, but now I think it is really helpful for a property where you, it's just not in the budget to be able to do physical staging because it's so expensive. It makes it so much easier for the buyer to visualize because it's really difficult for people to visualize. So that's one way. And then plus just also, even for me, I'm a visual person, but the floor plan with the photos makes it so much easier to, to really understand that how the property flows. So just everything um, that we do definitely helps to, to sell faster. I agree. All right, so I have um, a couple of questions from um, some folks that are online with this. Um, one of them is, what do you consider a quality image? Because there's, you know, a photographer might have one, you know, idea of what a good image is versus, you know, a real estate agent. So just kind of what would you determine as a quality image? Um, I just feel like a crisp image. I mean, I feel like as far as like the cleanliness of the house is on the agent and her sellers or his sellers. Um, but I just feel like the, you know, the angles of, you know, if it's a bedroom, don't get it where if there's a wall, like where the closet is at, don't get it that angle, you know, maybe switch the angles around so you can see a full view of the room. Um, so angles, um, crispness of the photos, I guess that's the word that you guys will use. <laughs> um, colors, you know, making it pop when it's bright in the house, obviously not taking inside photos at nighttime using, you know, just the overhead lights, um, natural lighting. Um, I feel like those are all definitions of what we would say is a crisp quality photo mm -hmm. agree I think that that is and to me the angles is the, the biggest thing um when the room is cut off and that is like my pet I hate that so I'm like you can't even see you know they would have moved the camera a little bit in a different direction you could have captured the whole room so mm -hmm. you know the right angle to capture everything is is important that way you don't have to have 50 different angles all around the room and you're putting all those pictures up. So, you know, to uh, to me, less is more. I, I think um, I saw a pop up, like I would love like 30 images or, or less. So like, you, I feel like you can achieve that if you can capture the rooms in their full capacity versus having to go on all these different angles. And now I got to put up five different pictures of one room just to capture mm -hmm. all angles. <laughs> I think right. that's a, um, a very interesting and awesome perspective to hear because I think oftentimes it's, you know, more is better. So let me get this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle. And it's like, you know, to hear you say that, you know, just helps to, I think, solidify for many that we're good. Like, just get the best shot of the room so that we can, you know, sell it and we're good. Mm -hmm. As long as you can see it, like yeah. we don't need it from every single angle. <laughs> um, we just need to make sure you can, <laughs> yeah, you can see it. So it's to me, that's what I feel at least is they need to know what this room is going to look like when they come to view this house. So if you as the photographer have captured that room, I think you've done your job. We had a um, question from Facebook um, and it talks about now that the quality of mobile phone video is so amazing. What are your thoughts on a photographer who shoots video using a mobile phone on a gimbal? Um, if it's quality, I don't care what you use. I mean, you're the photographer, you know what's gonna look good. So if it, I mean, if you feel like, hey, that 13 Pro or whatever phone you have is gonna shoot better than your camera, go for it. Um, you know, and if it's not, maybe we can, you know, offer something, say, Hey, if you don't like the way this looks, I'll reshoot it at no cost to you or whatever the case is. Um, but yeah, whatever works for you guys, that's y'all's profession. Y'all know it's best. I'm yeah. with it. <laughs> I guess we wouldn't, we wouldn't know how you shot it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, if it's quality to us, like we, you know, we wouldn't know. So I yeah. guess, yeah. 
I, I don't go to the shoots anymore. Like that's the relationship I like to build with my photographers where I'm not having to be there. I don't like to uh, micromanage what someone is doing. Um, that's just me personally. I know agents that like to be there so they can tell the photographer to do this and do that. But I feel like if you build a relationship well with your photographer, you don't have to do that anymore. So, um, so yeah, so if you were there shooting that video with the phone I, and it turned out great, I would have never known. <laughs> cool. Um, so we just talked about editing. What are your thoughts on images that have been exaggerated to the editing to the point that it doesn't provide a, a realistic listing? Uh, so, yeah. Like editing that's just like, I guess, too far. Yeah, um, I I personally hate it when I'm working with a buyer, um, because so I can I can understand this question a lot because when we walk in, my buyer thinks it looks it looks a certain way, and if it looks completely different from the pictures, we're like turned around immediately, and the feedback is I wish it looked like the the pictures. I thought it would have looked like the pictures. Sheena, I'm sorry that we even wasted your time if I would have known it looked like this. So um, so I think that that's what you get when you go too far. People will show up, but they're going to be mad mm -hmm. that this was not what they thought they were going to come view. Yeah. So how do you feel about fixing, like, let's say there's a hole in the wall and you know, I, I guess it's different if it's going to be repaired before, you know, showings begin or things like that. But for blemishes like that, you know, how do you feel about having that done? Because I think there's some levels of um, ethical, you know, behavior on our side as well as, you know, being requested to do something. But how do you feel about that aspect? Um, if it's holes in the, in the wall, like holes, or if it's one hole, yeah, it's, like, Oh, yeah. If it's like a small hole and that's like it, I would say that's fine. Yeah. But if the whole house is like a house that just needs this, you know, distressed and yeah. you can't rehab the house with your photo, <laughs> with your editing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that that's even fair to ask of a photographer to do that. Um, so I just think it depends on like what it is that that house, that property condition is, I would say. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want the photographer to be responsible for, for so much of that. Um, because I think they need to know they're buying, if it's a distressed property, it's a distressed property. This is what you're getting. You got to fix that hole, that hole, and that hole too. So we don't want you to cover that up in the photo so that they can see this, if it's an investor, so to speak, um, what they are walking into. Mm -hmm. yeah funny thing is I just want to share this quick story really fast I actually had a client come from Raleigh which is like an hour and 15 minutes to Greensboro we were looking at a property I mean the images were amazing I was talking about the the walls look in good condition the floors look clean and like everything was perfect with the house so we were like oh we put an offer in on this house we get to the property <laughs> I kid you guys not, the cabinets are gone. The cabinets are gone off of it, but on the pictures, it looked like the cabinets were there. So I don't know if they added that in, edited that in or what, but my client was livid. And this was like late at night. She had to work. So this was the only time that she could go. So we get there. And so needless to say, I left very bad feedback to that agent. Like this is false advertising pretty much because, you know, you do have clients coming from every which way so you can't do that like the property needs to be marketed as what it looks like as close as possible like you know the cabinets you could have easily mentioned we're going to replace the cabinets or whatever the case was it was none of that so to answer that question it depends on the extent of it kind of like Sheena said like if it's a distressed property disclose that I feel like that's where like the ethical stuff comes into play at Awesome. Um, and Sheena, this was a comment um, from one of the photographers for you. Um, he said that you indicated that you didn't use floor plans. And he says, as a very successful real estate agent, I'm pretty sure it would not be a matter of funds. As for himself, not only as a real estate photographer, but also one who is currently looking to move. I love seeing a floor plan. 
As a photographer, we always shoot in an attempt to show the room connections, but there's nothing like a floor plan to get a better feel of the flow of a home. Um, so that was just a, a comment. And I can attest to that too. When I moved here, we had literally one day to buy a house. And um, if we didn't see a floor plan, we didn't look at the house because I wanted to see the connection of the rooms to see how the home flowed. And there were some that we were like, yep, not going there, not going there, just because of how rooms were connected, so. Yeah, it's just not, uh, and I don't know if you, when you were here, Mark, we just don't do it a lot here. Yeah. Like, so, you know, I don't know what, what it's like in that photographer's market, but it's not in Chicago. Um, it's more so done a lot, especially in like the condos and those type of things, but out here in the burbs, it's not a big uh, thing to do out here um, for the floor plan. So yeah, it's not a matter of money. It's just you don't get it in any house <laughs> so it's yeah. kind of like you're spending additional money and it's not it has never uh, hurt me in selling a house here so um how much do you both prepare your sellers for a photo shoot what instruction do you give you know how does that process look and work for you um, so I do my initial, when I go to visit the property, I go through and tell them everything that I think that they need to do, um, in order to sell. And then also the photographer that I'm using, they give a list also of the things that they need them to do, which really is the same stuff that I've told them, but it's a written list, which is kind of cool because it kind of just reiterates all the same things and they have something in writing. Um, so yeah, it's, I'm very on that and I tell them what to do. And when mm -hmm. Mark was here, we, I would be like, Mark, I told them what to do and we get there and they didn't do anything. Um, so, but I definitely have to do, that is my job to tell them how to, you know, make sure everything is clear, make sure everything is clean and all those things we walk through the, um, things that we know that'll make the rooms look bigger, um, and the space look clearer. Um, clearing off the counters and the spaces and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I am hands-on on that part. Yep, same exact. I feel like most realtors have that same practice, just, you know, telling your clients, hey, this needs to be put up. You, I, I kind of help them, like, put their self in somebody else's shoes. If you were walking in and you've seen clutter everywhere, you're not going to know what to do with a certain space or you're not going to probably want to buy that home because it's like ew, it looks messy because a lot of people don't have that visual of what a home could look like they're seeing it in its current state so I'm just like just clean up just let's let's put stuff away like it's just for this moment you know and throughout the show and stuff put your stuff away personal property all of that um I recommend clients taking like personal photos down um which I feel like that was taught to us in school um, and some people do it, some people don't, but I just kind of tell them, like, just do it, just be on the safe side. Um, this question is, is more about um, how we as photographers can reach you all as, as real estate agents. What's the best way for us to market to you all? Is it social? Is it email? Is it print? Is it in person? How is it that um, we can do a better job? So let's say, um, maybe it's a new real estate photographer who's trying to break into the market or someone who just moved to another area. What's the best way to connect with you guys? Definitely social media for me, I say. Um, I actually had one reach out to me and was like, hey, you know, I'm willing to offer you a free shoot uh, for your first real estate photography shoot. And I'm like, okay, but I don't want to chance it. So, <laughs> but that is, you know, that is a great way for someone who doesn't have like a team of people, um, you know, photographers or whoever, then that's a great way for somebody to showcase their business, maybe send pictures and then, you know, offer like a discounted service or something like that. Um, I think that's a great practice. Um, I'm trying to think, cause I'm very hard to, tap into um so it if so i'm like i've had all of that stuff and none of it works for me like you can't send me a dm you can't that's not going to make me uh switch my photographer or give you a shot to <laughs> and this is my livelihood so you know it's kind of hard so i tell 
a lot of people. Um, I was the president of Women's Council of Realtors. So that is a, a real estate organization that is nationwide. So if you can find a Women's Council in your um, neck of the woods, I would say, you know, when events are happening to, you know, go to some events, start meeting folks. Realtors are at that event or those events because it's Women's Council of Realtors. So you're going to be with a bunch of realtors where you can kind of get to meet people. So I'm a like person to person kind of, I got to feel the vibe from you, like it, before I can even work anywhere, you know, with you at all. So it cannot be, social media is cool so I can see your work, but in order for me to want to take a chance, I need to I like meet you in person. And I'm not going to meet you for coffee. So you might as well come to an event that I'm at already. <laughs> so that's yeah, and that's really a good perspective because I think there are so many different um, mindsets and ideologies out there about what to do, how to do it. And I think it's great to hear from two different perspectives, two different parts of the country, um, because again, there are experts that tell us exactly what to do. And what they told us to do would fail miserably with Sheena and might work with Victoria, you know? So <laughs> I think it's good to hear, you know, those perspectives to understand. And I think the, um, the associations are definitely a great um, avenue. And Sheena, you know, when you were president and just, you know, as a photographer going to the event, you know, just, and, and sometimes you have to be there not once, not twice. Sometimes you gotta be there five times to you know, really make your presence felt and to, to show that you're genuine, you wanna be there. Um, and I think that that makes a big difference in the long run. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, because if people like you, they'll be like, okay, let me give Mark a try, I like that guy. So like that, that's just my, you know, my personality. Um, mm -hmm. But Women's Council, you can, it's wcr.org, I believe. But look up Women's Council of Realtors. You will see it's everywhere. You can put in, um, your state and it'll tell you what different networks are in your area so in Chicago I believe we have or Illinois we have nine so I used to run the Women's Council of West Suburban Network here so it's a lot of them here and so what it is is we educate um, it's not just women it's women men it'll be attorneys there lenders there photographers insurance inspectors and they have we put on like events that are educational and networking um, you know, that's what I, we do a lot here. Some organizations are more just breakfast meetings. So it's all kind of different things depending on what you like. But so I just uh, would say, you know, visit, and you can visit more than one. If it's a couple in your market, you know, visit and get to know people. So uh, if you want to get around realtors, that's a good way. Or like Mark is saying, the associations are great because um, they also have events that you can go to or you can sponsor. Um, so you can meet some people and not like spend an arm and a leg if you don't want to, but at least have like maybe a table or just get a, mi a couple minutes to say something to introduce yourself. So those kind of avenues, if you're just trying new to the business, trying to get around realtors. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great advice. You're welcome. Um, we're going to wrap up shortly. I have a couple more questions. One is really technical and I don't know that either of you really care. So I'm going to ask it anyway, though. Um, because it's a lot of, it's photography jargon. So what is preferred? Flash photography, which takes a little longer on site or HDR, which is like blending of a bunch of natural light images together, um, which can be quicker on site and for delivery. Or do you not care about any of the technical stuff as long as your images come back the way? Yeah, yep. <laughs> like that, don't care. You do not care. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't I never knew you did either. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so no, doesn't matter. Yeah, and I think that's some one of the things that as photographers, you know, I'm a I'm a nerd. Like I love all the technical aspects. I love all the stuff, but me explaining that to someone who's like, I just I we like, I, I got to go. Like, my next appointment <laughs> is in five minutes. And, like, mm -hmm. you talking about the light and how you bouncing it, I don't really care. Like, I got to go. <laughs> so I've had to learn to, like, nerd out to other nerds, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a, a great question from Angela. Um, when you deal with one photographer, and as that photographer grows and hires more people, you are now no longer dealing with the original photographer. 
that you built the relationship with, is that a deal breaker or how do you deal with the consistency of work and the relationship if they have a team of people? Uh, uh, for me, oh, you wanna go? It's okay, I, you could go ahead if you want to. I remember what I had to say. Um, so, I mean, I'm the same way. I run a team now. So, you know, when it was just me, everybody got me. Now is you're going to get my team members. So, you know, and if people stop working with me because of that, I would be out of business. <laughs> so the same thing for my photographers, I would say they, you know, as long as their quality and their, their training, I, I trust that their training of their staff is, you know, just as great. So I'm going to trust them. And if I see that the work is different, then I will go back and say, hey, these photos are not anywhere like what I, I'm used to receiving. Like we went in the beginning of this communication and let's talk this out because I'm going to give you opportunity to fix it. If not, if I see it's not going to be fixed, then I'm going to have to go somewhere else. So it's not about using anyone else. So like right now, the place that I use, we go online and, and based on what date and time that we need, what a photographer is available in the, their media team that's who we get which is fine so everybody's work is the same so I, for us it doesn't matter as long as the quality is still great yep exactly what I was gonna say <laughs> I feel like it, like if you're teaching them then they should you know learn the same skills that you did so they should be able to implement the same or you know, close to the same images that you did. Um, like us, we would be out of business if, you know, people only prefer to work with us. So we can't expect that out of everyone else too, so. All right, one last question. Then I wanna um, open up the floor to you to um, give any last remarks to a room full of photographers um, who have an ear to, to hear what you have to say. Um, the question is, which social media platform do you most utilize, most often utilize? Instagram for me yeah i'm big on instagram and i also use facebook so victoria any closing words for a room full of photographers from all over the world actually we not only have people here from the united states we have people from other countries as well so any closing remarks thoughts uh hello everyone um no not really just to um and i'm this way with everybody i kind of open it up this way, just be personable. Um, don't be a stick in the mud when we meet you. Because <laughs> it makes us not want to work with you again. Um, I'm big on that. If you guys cannot tell, um, I feel like if I can feel your energy just from the conversation, like, you know, that's how I chose Mark. He was very persistent when, you know, engaging with me on social media and, you know, just saying, hey, you know, if you get a chance, these are my photos and stuff like that. So just stay persistent. Um, don't be annoying. Don't be annoying, but persistent. And there's a big difference. And be personable. I could just tell just from his social media and the things that he posts and you know how he interacted with me that he was gonna be somebody that I could add to my team um, because we're like-minded in that scene. So just if that I hope that helps somebody. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I don't know if I have anything besides what she just said to add now I'm like to piggyback off you yeah um no I have pretty much you know nothing nothing else I gave some tips on how to meet realtors um that's probably one of the biggest things that people want just to you know as far as growing their business uh who can have too much business right so um and then I think I, I'm I'm never asked like what do you what do you like like I think no one ever asked us that. So mm -hmm. I, you know, so what, even from that front photo um, that I was trying to explain to them that you were doing for me, which was a, you know, cool shot. So, so especially if it's an agent that's been in the business for a while and you're trying to get in, like, what is it some, that, that they may want that they're not getting from their current photographer? Maybe that's the end for you. Um, if there's something that you can kind of do a little bit different. I've had people like offer me, you know, since I am very connected, like I'll give you a discount if you just, you know, tell people about me and I'm going to do that anyway, little bit they know if they do a good job. But so I promote the photographer on every single Instagram post that I post and Facebook post that I post. Great. So I've always done that. I did it with Mark, like I'm always going to do it. So to me, it's it's not costing me a thing to tag them in my post so that 
all the people that I know that are realtors, they can now use that photographer. So um, if you're working with somebody that you do trust and you got a relationship, you know, maybe ask them to do that for you. Cause that definitely, I don't know if you, if it helped you Mark, but it helped, I think it helps to bring more business to you guys. Um, so I feel like it's not just take, 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 like we as the realtors should also give a little bit as well. Yeah, and I think um, I'm going to give my closing remarks and pass it to Tammy. Um, but I think that's one of the biggest things, you know, for me, it has been to be a partner to you guys to not just be, you know, my goal was never just to be a real estate photographer. It was to be part of your team, to be a friend, to be um, somebody who could help out regardless of what it was. If you need something, I'm going to help. Mm -hmm. And I think when you have a genuine heart and when you have a, a, a genuine desire to be that type of person, doors open up. And you guys are both that. I mean, you, you're you both very uh, generous with your time, with your resources. You you know refer people. You tell everybody. Um, and I think that's why you're both as successful as you are. So thank you again for it spending time with us today and, and opening up and sharing with some, you know, some secrets that we may not be able to ask the people that we work with in our markets. Um, but we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sheena, I miss you so much. Victoria, I can't <laughs> wait to see you again. And uh, Tammy, I'll open up. Uh, I would just say, uh, ladies, thank you so much for being here. It was really great. And what, what I love about this is that, um, really what you want. And I think what most of the photographers want also is that, um, sense of being a team and creating those relationships. And I love it that both of you have, um, want to be loyal to your photographers and take care of your photographers. It, that's great to hear. I'm sure everyone on the call is happy to hear that because that's, that's how we, that's what we want. That's exactly what we're trying to do. If I can speak for everyone here. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys for having us. I appreciate it. Thanks. Absolutely. I appreciate you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again so much. And everybody online, thank you so much for joining from all over the world. We appreciate you. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank Bye. you. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.